In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some more music visualizers. That's what's in these boxes here behind me. These have just arrived. I've featured a number of these over the years. I like to do a bit of a roundup every now and then, bundle a few together so we can see what's out there. Now, the last time I did that, it was a year ago. And since then, there've been quite a number of new devices come onto the market. So I recently ordered a number of them. Let's open them up and see what I got. Okay, let's take a look at this first one. See, I'm not sure what's in each of these because I did buy a few different ones and uh, it was a couple of weeks ago now and it was late at night. So uh, we'll find out as we have a look through. I remember this one though. This is uh, one of those plexiglass things where there's a LED behind these sections here and it lights up columns. It's upside down at the moment. Let me get it out. We'll have a proper look at it. Okay, so counting these, we've got 20 positions on each of them, and there are 14 columns, or as it says, 14 bands on the front there. Level, colour and brightness controls. Microphone hole there, LED indicator on the front. Around the back, RCA stereo inputs, power input, on-off switch, and then there's a two-position switch there that I'm not too sure what it does, and I don't think I've got any instructions with this. We'll find out, no doubt. Okay, we've got a stereo RCA cable here. We've got an RCA to 3.5mm mini jack, and then we've got a 3.5mm splitter. The idea being, of course, you'd get your audio source device, you'd put your splitter in there, you'd send one lot of audio off to this, you'd send the other lot off to some speakers. As usual, the power cable's a bit too short. This section isn't too bad, the bit that comes from the unit into the brick. And then you've got this thing, and that's the bit that's really the problem, because you plug that into the wall, this ends up kind of hanging loosely, which then drags down on the rest of it. So just something to be aware of. Let's plug this in, see what it does. Right, now this is proving quite difficult to shoot. I haven't started it off yet, but I can see that the colours here don't look the same on the camera. There's green along the bottom and there's a blue on the next row up. It doesn't quite look like that. If I turn the brightness down, yeah, okay. Well, we'll get it going anyway, see what it looks like. go through the colours here, if we start all the way to the left, there's a click there and that's the left hand position and it's cycling through by the looks of it, different colours, yeah, these rows are changing on their own and then this is the first one we can choose now and then we can move through, we kind of have these different shades, that's quite a nice one with the red, it's hard to get exactly on the colour that you want, it's a very fine adjustment but uh, there we go. You can't really see the uh, LEDs because they're behind the columns here. There's a strip that goes up each one of these and there's a multicolored LED at the back. And just look how bright I can make this area if I turn it all the way up. That's crazy. Now the camera's adjusting for that. So let's just, uh, let's lock off the exposure. Right, here we go. Wow, that is bright. That's weird, we've got a, got a rogue red LED there, have you noticed? Okay, I figured out what the switch is for on the back. If I move it into its right hand position, you can see that this is now reacting to my speech. So it's no longer listening to the audio through the RCA inputs on the back, it's instead listening via the microphone on the front here. Now, of course, you can adjust the level of these if the audio isn't getting the bars to go high enough, but I much prefer to have a device like this use an inbuilt microphone rather than wiring it in. Of course, wiring it in is great for accuracy, but with a device like this, we're not dealing with accuracy. We're just dealing with lights that flash along with the music, and it's much easier 
just to put something on top of your speakers or near your hi-fi and have it listen out to the audio in the room through its built-in mic than have it all wired into your existing setup. Much more convenient. Now there was one thing I noticed during the demonstrations and it seems like this isn't true stereo. I'm not convinced. Both sides appear to be identical with no variation between them whatsoever. So to test this out, I made a recording. So just have a listen to this. Okay, so in this test recording, I've recorded mono audio, but it should be appearing equally through both channels. But now let's move over so that I'm just talking from the right hand channel. So it should just now only be showing up on the right. And now let's move it across. So now I should only be showing up on the left. So if this is showing on the right, there's something wrong. And if this is showing on the left, there's something wrong. And now I'm back to speaking in the middle. Right, so I think that demonstrates that this is not representing a true stereo signal. So I had to play around with the cables on the back. I've swapped in some of my own just in case there was something wrong with the wires. And it wasn't that. What's happening is one of the plugs here is represented on both sides and the other one is only on one side. If I just unplug one of these here, I think it's this one. Let's play that back again. So in this test recording, I've recorded mono audio, but it should be appearing equally through both channels. But now let's move over so that I'm just talking from the right hand channel. So it should just now only be showing up on the right. And now let's move it across. So now I should only be showing up on the left. So if this is showing on the right, there's something wrong. And if this is showing on the left, there's something wrong. OK, let me try and break this down. The right hand socket is fine. The left hand one has been wired up incorrectly. By that, I mean anything played into the left hand side shows up on both the right and the left of the display, whereas the right hand socket, well, that one's fine. If you were just to play something in the right hand socket, it just shows up on the right. That's what's supposed to happen with the other one. But for some reason, they've wired that across both sides. There's not a great deal to see in here. I was looking for the wires from the left and right stereo to see if they somehow joined together, and they don't. They start off separately. They go into the circuit board separately. There's little plugs there, one for left, one for right. So it's somewhere on the circuit board itself, within the circuit, that it's combining them. So it's not a simple matter of messing with some wires to get this thing to do anything different to what it's doing at the moment. So what I'd suggest is, it is as it is, that's what you get, that's how it works, and therefore it is really only a mono display that's duplicated across both sides. Now, whether that's important to you, well, that's up to you. But as far as I'm concerned, I think that's a little bit disappointing. Okay, on to the next one. Let's see what we've got inside this box. Right. Looks like I'm gonna be doing a bit of, um construction work with this one that I wasn't expecting. I thought all these were ready-made. Now it's not entirely surprising that I got a kit because when you look at the various listings on AliExpress they're not the most descriptive. You're not entirely sure what you're buying until it arrives. So in this case I've got this thing I have to assemble myself but we've got three LED panels. Each of these connect to one another so they're going to be in a long row like that and then we have the controller board here which the audio goes into, as well as the power. And then this leads off as far as the power goes to the three boards and also with the ribbon cables in sequence to one another. Also got a remote control, power supply there, and then various screws and brackets to hold these three things together. And one three and a half millimeter mini jack audio cable and an instruction sheet. And it says, thank you very much for choosing the Spectrum products of Kingsong Electronics. Main features of the AS1000 Spectrum, which is this thing. It's our flagship Spectrum product using a higher level 32-bit ARM processor. It goes on after that. So yeah, this is the flagship product. So let's put it together, see what it does. Now, as you'd imagine, these instructions are not the clearest, but I think it's pretty foolproof. Well, famous last words, but from what I can see, you get three panels, you make sure they're the same way up as one another. You put the long ribbon cable into the first one here, join those two together with a shorter one, same with those. And then on this board here, there's some dip switches. You have to tell it what kind of panels you've got. 
and how many of them there are and I've got it set to three on here already so it looks like they've pre-done that for me so just a matter of plugging these three connectors into each of the panels. I'm not going to screw them together straight away because I just want to make sure it's all working first so uh, let's just plug it together see what happens. Okay I'll flip it over now one thing I've noticed of course all these things really stick out from the back so you can't mount this flush you have to put it in some kind of cabinet or keep it away from the wall so that's one disadvantage of this design but let's just prop it up here okay I'll plug it in oh right okay well all panels seem to be working that looked like it was upside down there but let's play some music let's see what happens yeah definitely upside down Now just like the first device this one has a microphone built onto the circuit board here that's what's picking up my voice at the moment it also has a three and a half millimeter mini jack input and you can choose between those two using the buttons to access the menus on the device itself or via this infrared remote control much easier via the remote control so if i press menu here you can see we've got mode setting appearing at the top of the screen there and i can just go down the various options here reboot save settings etc and if I go into the one that says mic setting I can turn the mic off and that now means the three and a half millimeter jack is live so I'll just turn it back on again on the mic for the moment because what we're going to do now this thing has quite a good number of display options and rather than me just go through them laboriously one after the other I'm going to put this in auto mode so it will cycle through a number of those and I'll play some audio into it some music so for the next couple of minutes you're going to be listening to music from the YouTube audio library accompanied by this display. Of course there'll be chapters on this video if you want to skip ahead and I will point out that the colours on this are much brighter in person than seem to be appearing on my camera's viewfinder so again bear that in mind. But yeah I'll just turn that mic back off again and we'll plug in our wire and get ready here is some music coming your way right now. Okay, let me give you a whistle stop tour of the various settings so i'm just going to switch it on on the remote and you'll see this one here i've saved that as a preset that was the last mode i was in when i switch it on it comes back on in that mode as well i've saved some other presets here so for example if i press number two that's another one that i've saved some bars with uh, red at the top and then number three green in the middle with red peaks but those are just presets you can access all sorts of different settings and then save them under these here so they're accessible with one button press now if we just go into the menu you can see we can move through those modes there i'll show you those in a minute the different display modes but we'll just go down we've got reboot save settings which is where i saved those presets before show the logo at boot up which i've turned off 
the language, which is in English, of course, at the moment, and then the spectrum range. Now, the spectrum range, I'll go into that. At the moment, it's showing 5 kilohertz across this whole display here, and that's why this side's lighting up. Now, if I was to change my frequency response to something higher, to, say, 16 all the way to the top, now I'm really focusing more at this end, and there's not an awful lot happening up here because my voice resides more in this area. So to get the display to show more, you can adjust it down. If I was to say put it at one kilohertz, then I'm all over the show on this one. So, you know, you get the idea. It enables you to tailor the display to match the audio. Otherwise, you end up with a lot of stuff happening down here and then not much going on up here. But of course, that's probably accurate for the audio that's going into it, but it's not the best thing when it comes to an interesting display. Right, so that was the spectrum range. And then we've got gain setting. Now this thing has auto gain control, but we can set it to high, medium or low. Now I've moved it into low and you can see again, I'm not registering so much. So I'll put it back up to high again so I get a bit more of a display. And then after that, if I move out of that menu, uh, that was the mic on off. And then we've got brightness here as well. And at the moment it's uh, not on its brightest setting. Let me just uh, adjust the brightness up to the maximum here. Now, I don't know how that's coming through on the camera. It is really quite bright in person and it would look good in a well-lit room on that setting. So, uh, yeah, it's all very intuitive, but let's get back to our main settings. So we've got mode and colour here. Now, if we just go into the colour one, I'll just show you there. We've got uh, a number of different colours. So if we start there, that's a kind of blue. It's like a heat blue going through green up to red. And then we've just got red and green and blue and yellow. You get the idea, you can just work your way through a number of single colours and then we get into some multicolour ones like this which are nice to look at but probably not very accurate. And then this one which has a different colour on each line. Right, so those are the colours and then we're going into mode setting. Right, these are the different display options. So this current one is number 10, let's go down to number 1. Uh, so that's the first one there. Now I think we need to change this into a more normal colour setting because it makes everything look a little bit too exciting. So let's just uh, change that back to the colour number one. Right, okay, so now you get a bit, a bit more of an idea. So this one, blue through to green through to red with bars and peaks at the top. And if we just go into our mode setting again, so that's mode one. Now this is mode two, it's without the peaks on the top. Um, and then mode three, we've got the peaks back again, and then mode four again without the peaks, mode five, we're leaving a gap in between the bars and we've got the peaks, mode six without the peaks, so we, you get the idea, I'm working my way through, I'm not going to describe them all, and then we get into these ones here, so those ones are, these white dots take a little bit of time to drop down, and you can't adjust the speed of those, so that one, I don't know, it's up to you, number 10, prefer it without, 11, same thing again, but done with uh, bigger segments and 13. It's so basically not that much difference between them. You've got two main modes and then different options within, and then we're back to number one again. So if I just go back to say, um, I prefer it around about there. I think that's a nice one. Right, so there you go. That's all the modes. That's all the different color options. And if I just drop out of here, and uh, you can adjust the color also by pressing left and right quickly on this. So they've really got the operating system set up quite neatly, I think. Uh, for a simple device like this, everything that you could want on here, it does. The only slight disadvantage with this one, with these three individual boards, is that you can see a line between them. Uh, you might not be able to see it on the camera, but I can see the wall through here. They are tapered slightly, these displays, so that they hold themselves together at the front more than at the back, but still you can see through them a little bit. Now you can see I've got things behind here to prop this up because it doesn't stand up on its own. And again, that's another thing. You need to build yourself a cabinet to put this in or perhaps build it into a wall or something. But uh, yeah, as it stands, it isn't really finished when you buy it and it wasn't cheap either. So uh, I think I've done everything I want to do with this one. Uh, let me just um, go on to the next one now. Okay, now this is the final one for today. Now inside here we've got something that's a little bit more professional than the other two. The other two were just really for entertainment purposes. This one is more of a piece of equipment that you could use for monitoring and adjusting sound. Okay, change of plans I'm afraid. This isn't what I expected to find inside that third box. I just judged it based on the weight and this is a pretty heavy thing. And the only thing that I ordered that I expected to be heavy was a ready-made spectrum analyzer with a metal case and an input and an output. It would have taken me all of five minutes to demonstrate that. As it is, this thing, this is a kit. This is something I have ordered. I didn't expect it to be this complicated. And it looks like 
it will take me quite some time to put this together. So I think rather than do this one a disservice and rush it and stick it on the end of this video, I'll keep this one back and show it separately. So that means that the video that was going to have three things in it now has only got two. So let's just go back over the two things we've seen. Okay, now both items that you've seen were bought via AliExpress. As a result of that, they've got some rather snappy clickbait optimization type names. This one is known as the Creative Professional 14 Segment Spectrum Analyzer Level Indicator Music Spectrum Light LED Acrylic Light Column VU. Uh, the important thing though is the price. It's not cheap. Um, delivery to the UK included the total price was 166 pounds and 76 pence. Quite a lot of money. Now, there are various acrylic towers you can build yourself. The fact that this is ready-made means that it costs a little bit more, but the thing that really lets this one down is the fact we've got this stereo display, which is not true stereo. It's just duplicating one of the channels and showing it twice. And of course, that's whether or not you're speaking to the single microphone on the front or you're inputting some audio onto the back. Overall, I'm not recommending this. However, if you are interested, there will, of course, be affiliated links in the video description. But yeah, it's expensive and it's flawed. So let's go on to the other one. OK, now this one, the professional full color RGB sound control, remote control, music spectrum display, KTV rhythm light, 160 mode, new product, four times P5, P4. Well, this one cost me £182.49. Yeah, £182.49, and it's not even finished. Well, I mean, it works, but it's up to you to build the case around this one. Now, if that's your kind of thing, then it works really well. I've got to say, there's nothing wrong at all with the way it works. The software, the remote control, the little device here, the built-in mic or the inputs, there's no faults here at all but it's just an unfinished product and it's down to the user to build a case around it or find some use for this. And I've got to think a lot of the hobbyist kind of people who would use something like this would probably prefer to source all these components themselves and program their own little box here and get their own LED panels. But for the kind of person who is pretty good with woodwork or handicraft type skills, but is not really interested in electronics, well, this might be the thing for you. However, it is expensive again, and I don't know whether or not it's really worth it just for some flashing lights, but of course that's down to the individual. It's not for me to tell you what to spend your money on. But yeah, there you go. That's the second one, and again, affiliate links in the video description. So to summarise, these two items that you see in front of you now cost me a total of £350. And with the benefit of hindsight, I would suggest that that probably was not the best way I could have spent that amount of money. But in doing so, it's enabled me to bring this video to you here today. And in watching it, you've now had the information that you need, hopefully, to determine whether or not you should spend any of your hard-earned money on either of these two items. I would suggest probably not, but ultimately, of course, I'll leave that decision down to you. But bear in mind, I will be showing some more devices along these lines in the future, in the coming months, and hopefully, in amongst those other ones, we might find the odd gem that's a little bit more deserving of your time and money. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.